Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for assignmentsystamp.com. Today I'm going to be using the Best Year Yet stamp set as well as the Modern Postage Stamp Edges and Rectangle Stencils. So I'm first going to show you this stamp set. It was in a recent card kit and it's one of my favorite birthday stamp sets as of late. I'm going to be using a re the really large happy birthday in the top right corner and then the little tiny candles in the bottom right corner. As far as the stencil goes, this is a really fun set because you have two main six by six stencils to work with and then all the little interior pieces from the cutouts as well. There are also some little edges there that you can use and I'll show you how to use those in today's video. So I'm going to start out by taking one of the stencils and I'm going to position it directly over a folded card base. My card today is a one layer card. There will, there will be no additional things on top of it. So it's a great birthday card to send in the mail. So after I have that area positioned right over my card, I turned it over and I taped it from the back. This is just so that it stays in place and it doesn't move around while I'm doing my ink blending. I'm just using some easy C tape for that. So now I'm going to take four different colors of Simusis Stamp Positively Saturated Inks and I'm going to ink blend on top of this. Starting with the color Sweets and I'm going to add this pink magenta shade in two different areas for this large rectangle. I wanted to have the color in a couple different corners and give uh, there are lots of opportunity for colors to overlap and blend. So now I'm using Lemonade and I'm bringing that in and overlapping that pink shade so that it creates an orange and I get more bang for my buck by using two colors that overlap and create a third. My next color is Surf and I'm going to bring that in and it's going to overlap mostly the yellow shade so that it creates a green, but if it overlaps a little bit into that pink, it's okay. I'm actually going to be using a purple, violet, to really bring in more of that purple shade. So after I had a couple instances of surf and I blended it in kind of toward the center of the rectangle, I then switched to my last color, which is violet. And this is a really pretty intense purple. It really rounds out this sort of rainbow selection of colors and it adds just a little bit of intensity. I really loved adding it to the pink areas. So I added it a little bit in this corner here at the bottom and it just really emphasizes the nice edge on this rectangle. So after I had all of this blending done, it was time to take the stencil off of that card base. So I tipped it over to the back side and then peeled it up. This looks really beautiful as is, but I'm actually going to uh, clean off that stencil and I'll use it a little bit later. And I'm actually going to use the interior piece from that same section of the stencil and I'm going to position it over the top of my rectangle and, and then do some additional blending. Now I did have to turn this around, flip it over, try to find how it fits perfectly. And then I used a little bit of that same tape just to tape it in place. And I only wanted the tape on the top and left edges because I was going to add a shadow on the right and bottom edges. I'm using a small mini blending brush from Simon as well as the flannel ink. This is a really nice, nice cozy gray color of ink. So I'll lift this up and then now this sort of looks like my kind of postage stamp edge rectangle is floating up off the surface of my card front. I'm now going to use a sticky mat from My Sweet Petunia and Misty and I'm going to put my card on that stencil mat and, and then I'm going to put my stencil right over the top. This is going to hold it in place give it a little bit of extra positioning power. Also, I'm using inside my Misty for my stamping. So I'm taping this in place just so the stencil doesn't slide around at all. And then I'm going to pick out a greeting from the stamp set. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm using the large happy birthday from the stamp set. And I'm going to make this really, really easy on myself and just stamp in black. One of my most favorite black inks to use for really crisp black stamping is a VersaFine Onyx Black ink. So I'm gonna be using that today. And it's going to give me a really great impression just with one stamping. So I press that down and then lifted it up. And now I have my greeting on my card. 
So I'm going to use the two little candles from the stamp set, but I wanted them to look like they were uh, kind of cut off the edge of my colorful area. So I've removed my project out of my Misty and I'm going to do some stamping with acrylic blocks. It's just a little bit easier to do it this way since I'll be repeating these candles over and over again. So I'm picking up some black ink on each candle and then coming over and stamping it directly onto the bottom of my card design. The stencil that's on top is protecting that white border on my card front. So these candles are going to look like they're, uh, the images are cut off the end. I just repeated these going all the way across the bottom edge. Now because of the, the width of the, or I should say the depth of the stencil, the plastic, it's a very, very durable and sturdy. But because of that, I wasn't able to get these candle lines completely to the very bottom of my ink blended area. So I am going to take a 0.1 Copic multi-liner, just a really thin black pen, and kind of, kind of fudge it a little bit and finish off the lines on these candles. Um, it's a very small detail. I probably could have skipped it, but I think it does make it look a little bit more finished. So this can this uh, birthday card is completely finished and I thought it'd be fun to do a matching envelope. So I have this white envelope from Simon and I'm going to slide it into one of these edge areas on my stencil. I'm sliding it over to just where I want it and then I'm going to turn over the entire envelope and tape it from the other side. It's just a little bit easier to tape it this way, but you could also tape it from the right side as well. I'll do, I'll add a little bit of post-it tape to protect that area. I started blending with the pink and then I realized, oh, I really need to protect that, that upper edge. So I grabbed some post-it tape and just place that over the top. So if you wanted to just tape the stencil to the front of the envelope, just like that, while protecting that edge, you could do that also. I'm using the same colors of ink and making sure that I overlap them so I get those additional blended colors. So I'm bringing in this lemonade and then surf down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to bring in that really beautiful violet shade up at the very top of my envelope, or it looks like it's on the side right now, but it's actually the top corner of the envelope. I'll bring that in and blend that down into that pink shade. It's so pretty. I love this sort of rainbow gradient pattern. So I'll flip my envelope over and remove the tape so I can slide it out from my stencil. And then I'm going to clean that stencil really, really well so that I can use it again. So I've cleaned the stencil and then I'm going to come in and bring it in on the other side. So now I can blend from the other edge and it matches up perfectly with what I've already blended. I'm using that same post-it tape just to hold the stencil in place. And then I'm using that small mini blending brush and flannel ink to add that shadow. So it mimics the design on the card front really well. And it's just a slight little detail on this envelope to give it a little bit of pizzazz. So the last thing I have to do is just add some postage so I used a glue stick to glue on some of this vintage postage that doesn't have very much stick to it. I used a glue stick from Simon for this. It's one of my favorite ways to adhere old vintage postage to my envelopes. So I'll go ahead and uh, glue this down. And then I want to protect the ink blended area since those inks are not waterproof. So I'm going to use some micro glaze, some distress micro glaze from Tim Holtz as well as a mini round blending brush or tool, I should say. And I'm just going to smear this onto this ink blended area. The rest of the envelope doesn't need any of this uh, distressed microclase because uh, it's just white right now. After I put on a, an address for my recipient, uh, depending on how I write it, I might want to add this microclase as well. The microclase just gives it an added coating or layer uh, makes it resist any moisture a little bit more than it would on its own. So here's my card and envelope set using the Best Year Yet stamp set from Simon Says Stamp, as well as the Modern Postage Edge Rectangle Stencil. Thanks so much for joining me today. You can see all of the supplies that I've used today down below in the video description and the supply list are over at the blog. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.